Good afternoon, friends. <clears throat> I think everybody who's getting this recording should actually know me. <clears throat> and so you know not to take me too seriously, even though I am wearing a tie. <clears throat> Just in case you don't know me, though, I'm Ben Marlin. I'll be your instructor for Calculus 4, which has the subtitle of Vector Calculus and Differential Equations. <clears throat> Many of you will have had Calc 3 with me, making Calc 4 a natural follow-up. Others will have had uh, differential equations, which makes vector calculus and differential equations seem like a weird follow-up um, because of the fact that you've already had differential equations. The differential equations portion of the course will be just a little bit at the end. Really, the design is set up to take Calc 1, 2, 3, 4, and then differential equations. And so, whatever. Uh, what the purpose of this video is, is simply to give us a quick introduction here and then to give me an opportunity to talk you through syllabus stuff and not to have to waste a bunch of time in class for me to read stuff to you that you, you know, <clears throat> can take a look at easily enough. So bear with me as we take a look here. And then I will give you all the standard concern that I always have. I don't know for sure that this is actually showing you the screen that I'm seeing it show. So here's hoping. In any case, vector calculus, uh, uh, sorry, calculus four slash vector calculus syllabus. Um, there will be a link from the uh, from the home page of the Canvas site for the class. So you should have access to this and you can print out a physical copy if you'd like. But, you know, if, you, if you're okay with a, a, um, an electronic copy, this is all we need, right? So I'm just gonna run down through here real quick, talk about the stuff that it says on here and um, I point out anything that I think you need to really pay attention to. Uh, the first bit is just basic information. Notice that the course meeting room is Zoom. There is a link here I will put, well, there's a link here. And in addition, you'll be able to go to the Canvas site and click on a link from the Zoom tab. And that should take you to the day's uh, Zoom. You can be there before I'm there. And I've seen that people have accidentally logged into it in the middle of the night. So it apparently exists all the time. All right, then my office hours that are listed there, those also have links to them. Those also will be via Zoom. Here's the problem though. Last semester, I discovered that sometimes the URL is not static. And even though that should be the link it's what the link was the day that I copied and pasted. So if we come to find out later on that those links just won't work, then I will just send you an email every damn day with what the link is for that particular day. So you should have had multivariable calculus before taking this course. If you have not, uh, this course is gonna be really, really, really challenging, so. Uh, the course meets requirements for math majors and is a good idea for physics majors to take. Um, if you're taking this for quantitative literacy and you do not have the prerequisite, find another class because I cannot teach you algebra, Calc 1, Calc 2, and Calc 3 all in the first week in order to get you up to speed to do Calc 4. It's just not, not feasible. As for what we'll cover, we're going to do a lot of vector stuff vector calculus, no surprise. And we're going to hit some things that are the big theorems of the vector calculus, Green's theorem, Stokes theorem, the divergence theorem. And then at the end of the course, we're gonna do just a little bit with ordinary differential equations. This is all stuff that's in, that, in the textbook at the end of it, but nobody ever gets to because usually you're teaching this in three semesters instead of four. Our replanning into a four semester curriculum has borne fruit. So the textbook is listed there. Um, 
for most of y'all, I think you'll be getting it through the bookstore. If not, and if you have not gotten one yet, <clears throat> and you're ordering online, talk to me about something I can get to you as a temporary fix on that. I'm speaking very carefully and not saying things. So anyway, you need to have some sort of a graphing calculator, graphing utility. This is going to be, <laughs> this is going to be totally solved for you in just, just the next line or two here. But um, uh, yeah, it, we need to be able to access stuff online in order to do graphing. When we talk about vector fields, the love of God, nobody in their right mind ever graphs a vector field by hand. It's just, it would just be stupid. It just, just, just not done. Okay. That said, when I took it, we of course did that because we didn't have computers. We were carving our vector fields in stones. <clears throat> so, all right. Um, anyway, though, you need to have some sort of graphing calculator, graphing utility and uh, access to a uh, computer online, especially for the Google Collab project <laughs> and for Zoom, right? Also an iPad or other tablet and stylus. Now I have talked to the, uh, the folks at the library. I don't know exactly what portion of the library that's called, but you should be getting iPads if you do not already have one. What, what you'll be getting is the iPad minis and you will have to go to uh, public safety in order to pick those out and you have to bring your ID in order to do so. Then I am also getting you all something. Um, it's not, I'm not gonna be able to get you all an Apple Pencil. If I understand right, the iPad minis you've got don't work with the Apple Pencil. So that didn't, wouldn't help anyway, but I'm gonna grab you all some of these little cheap styluses so that you can write on those screens and it'll be a little bit more like writing on a piece of paper. And so as mentioned here, we're going to be using the Jamboard app and along those lines, let me try to show you what the Jamboard app will look like. So cross your fingers that this works right. So I'm screen mirroring, telling it to mirror to zoom. Yes, it's mirroring. Okay, great. So as you can see there, I have an app that says Jamboard down there in the lower middle. Oh my God, I've got so many things on there and you guys probably don't even need to see what some of those are. So um, yeah, Fight Club, I am a nerd. So, All right. So this Jamboard app, once you've got that installed, um, then I can send you links to these things called jams. And <clears throat> the jams, I am putting something in the background of each one of them that is a problem for you to work on. Now, insofar as, thing, as you're working on it, if you've got a stylus, then you can do things like, like, oh, come on. You can do things like this. And here is the, um, yeah, I didn't draw a very good thing for that. So let me try it again. So we've got something along these lines for our sign. And what did I say? 50 Newtons and uh, 50 degrees and 70 degrees. So maybe this is the one that's 70 degrees. Maybe this is the one that's 50 degrees. And so when you work on this, you're gonna to need to think about that you have a vector that's going straight down and you've got a vector that's going up this direction and you get a vector that's going up this direction. Maybe I draw in the horizontal there so that we can say 50 degrees is here, 70 degrees is here, and that means consequently that this angle here is 110 degrees, okay? So you're drawing out stuff like that, you're doing work on the actual screen, and when you are done with it, 
you can come up here to this part here, the little snowman, and it does not show you on the screen the options that I have. One of the options I have is share jam as PDF. Oh, now it shows you. Share jam as PDF. And I choose that and it's going to export all those. And then uh, in, oh, yep, yeah, it's going to show you that window. And then I can airdrop it uh, over to my Mac, which it apparently does not want to see. Uh, hello. Well, okay. So that's. So it's not going to work to do it that way. Well, that's okay. I can go through the other options I'm sharing. I can share it to my drive here and <clears throat> then tell it it's assignment one. And there for the, my drive, I've got a bunch of folders I can put it in and stuff. I'm just going to tell it to save here, tell it to upload, bing, bang, boom. Then I've got a PDF that is saved there on my drive. And then when I am turning in the assignment, I can go to, okay, I said that and then realized uh, I kind of called my own bluff and had not opened this up yet, but I can go to my class here. Boy, I hope I made that assignment already. I did not. Well, that was just wonderful. Okay, I'm not gonna bore you with doing that, but I can go to the assignments and I can upload that PDF. And that's what I want you all to be turning into me. Okay, so um, more on that here in a minute, but that's a lot of what we'll be doing in class. And because of the fact that we've got the iPads that we can work with, we can do things in class for realsies, and we won't be doing the boring thing of me sitting there waiting for you to ask questions. I'm gonna have you all actually sitting in the breakout rooms in pairs working on stuff. When class is over, you know, then I won't be there to answer questions but you'll finish up anything that didn't get finished in class, turn it in that evening. Hell, sometimes you will actually finish before class is over and get things turned in. Probably not real often, but you know, we can all dream. All right, so continuing on, let me say a little bit more about what we have on the syllabus here. Course credits, uh, learning outcomes, so most of these are going to be pretty straightforward. Uh, you may see this bit at the end. Uh, last semester, I, we tried some stuff with having a project for the last two weeks of class. And it really seemed to be something that the students enjoyed. And it kind of seemed to get people doing stuff and learning things outside of their comfort zone. So I decided to incorporate a little project for this class as well. So, so um, in any case, for that, you'll have to develop things a little bit in order to, to be able to say what it is you're doing in your proposal. I want you to apply some technology to, to it and then to present your work and solutions to peers. Now, some of the projects last semester were very challenging, very, um, open-ended and stuff. So I'm going to provide you all with some starter ideas for projects this semester. And those, you know, those may be things so that, um, uh, so that if you can't think of anything that really strikes your fancy that you could get, get in on something else, so. All right, uh, ADA accommodations, if you are needing extended time, um, or a quiet environment for exams, you need to let me know about that ASAP, uh, preferably this first week, and make sure that you talk to the, uh, the Accessibility Resource Center. I can never remember what ARC stands for, so. Um, the Honor Code. <clears throat> um, this is a super big deal. Do not represent somebody else's work as your own. I will let you all read through that at your leisure. 
but you get in really big trouble for giving me somebody else's homework, for example. So that shouldn't be much of an issue for us. Um, we are going to be doing classwork that actually encourages collaboration, but when it comes exam time, you know, you, you gotta make sure the exams are your own work and those projects, please make sure that is your own work because that's a super big deal, okay? Um, if you hear the dog barking outside, that would be the dog outside barking and growling, great. <sighs> All right, uh, attendance policy, we only have 24 meetings for the class. If you miss more than four classes, then you might be getting uh, withdrawn from the course, okay? If you have some sort of excused absence, okay, hang on just a second here, yeah, okay. Uh, if you have an excused absence, for example, if you catch COVID, um, or if you're dealing with a family member who does, or there's work issues, there's a lot of different ways that there might be excused absences. Let me know what's going on. I'll work with you with this stuff. Just make sure it's a real excused absence, not just, you know, sorry if, if this sounds bad, but occasionally I will get students whose idea of an excused absence is that they went out drinking Thursday night. And no, we don't even have class on Friday, so that doesn't count. So, okay, so grading system. Uh, as you can see, the breakdown here 10% I put as participation is the wrong word. That should have been preparation. Okay, so I think all of y'all have dealt with this already. We're doing a flipped classroom. And that means there is reading to be done in the textbook. And there is a video that I will post prior to the night before uh, for you all to watch. And then a little link with just the one point question on it. Hey, what kind of questions do you have? It is acceptable to give no questions as an answer. But in that case, I need you to give me some kind of an evidence that you have actually done the preparation. Okay, then the classwork will be problems that we do. Um, let me come back to that in a second, all right? The exams will be done in class. Um, let me come back to that, okay? And then the problem presentation will be done via Zoom. And, um, and I can say more about that at your at our leisure. Um, I don't do anything fancy with grades, <clears throat> just a 10% breakdown, and then uh, a couple of percent at either end for pluses and minuses, okay? Then for readings for the class, uh, you have a tentative schedule, and <clears throat> I don't always manage to list exactly what the number of the section is on the schedule, or worse, I get it wrong. Uh, and so I need you all from the topics given on the schedule, from the topics given on the schedule, I need you to figure out the sections to actually read. <clears throat> and so there's a bit of that that's left to y'all. There's a link here in the syllabus that will take you to the actual schedule to give you an idea of what's going on with that. All right. Then major graded assignments. This gives you a uh, rough idea of that schedule without you having to click through. So then assignment details. I just went ahead and talked about the whole preparation thing about no questions. If you have no questions about uh, the preparation for a section, then I need you to say something that shows me that you actually did watch the video, okay? Um, well, I have in the past had a lot of questions along the lines of, hey, what's your favorite movie? I don't have time to answer those questions anymore. This semester I'm teaching three classes at the same time and um, it's, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> it'll eat up quite a bit of my time. So, sorry about that, but what I will do with those questions, I need you to get them in by 10 p.m. the night before. I am going to pull then a quick text file out of those 
I give a quick read through the next morning and figure out what it is I need to say in class so that we can get started at the beginning of class. I'll try to answer, answer questions that you had already asked and then I'll get you all into breakout rooms and working on stuff, okay? So, um, yeah, I need you all to get that done the night before. So, classrooms, flipped classroom model. I just showed you the stuff about the Jamboards. The thing that's gonna happen with that, uh, yeah, the thing that will happen with that is that Every day I will have breakout rooms set up and I will randomly put you into breakout rooms. And then in the breakout rooms, I will drop a copy of that jam for people to work on. And I will set it up so that, you know, each breakout room gets their own jam. I have to think a little bit about the logistics of that because I just realized a problem that crops up with it. And then once we've, but once we've got that sort of thing done, uh, that's what, what you're doing for the classwork. Now, here is the thing that's going to seem super weird. I'm going to give you the solutions. <clears throat> Not the detailed worked out solutions, but I'm going to give you what the final answer is. So if you have a problem that all you write is the final answer, well, you haven't really done the problem because I will provide the final answer for you. Okay. So what I'm looking for is for you to, to write up how you get there and for you to understand it. Because the thing that's going on now is that you're going to have exam questions which are not duplicates of the questions you were asked in class, but they'll be over the same material. And you have to understand how you got there in order to do stuff. Now, um, you do have examples in your textbook that are worked out in, in detail ahead of time, and you do have me popping in at your breakout rooms, answering the questions you might have. So you should be able to get all this stuff and have plenty of resources to figure it out. But I'm just letting you know, this is going to be kind of weird. I've never tried it like this, and I've had students who told me in the past they wanted me to do this. We'll see how it goes. All right. All right. The exams. Uh, um, in case you have been in a different on a different planet for the past six, nine, and fifteen thousand months, however long it's been now, it sure feels like that that past five years. Um, but in case you haven't dealt with COVID, then then I'll let you know that um, we still have a restriction that you can't have more than ten people in a classroom at a time. <laughs> And, and that includes me. And there are 18 of you. That would be 19 people. Um, so <clears throat> with regard to exams, what I'm going to do is to reserve a room. I think I can reserve the leak room. If not, I can get one of the other fairly large classrooms on campus that can actually accommodate 10 people. Because most of the rooms in Duke Hall, for example, only accommodate six people. Anyway, um, I'll get a classroom. I will schedule some times on the day of an exam um, and have you come in and take the exam. Now, notice here, I write exams that are planned for 75 minutes. I'm not going to write you a two hour exam just because we have a two hour class. Okay. Oh, no. <clears throat> there's, there's 45 minutes of work time that you didn't get to do that day or something. Not a real big deal, okay? Um, uh, if you want some justification, uh, maybe you're gonna spend 45 minutes on the one page of notes, okay? So anyway, um, the stuff that you will have be doing in the classroom is set up for you to be doing without online resources, okay? So uh, you need to be able to do stuff uh, more on your own in that particular case, all right? So uh, anyway, that's that sort of thing. And then the problem presentation, maybe I should say project presentation, project problem presentation, PPP, that's the loan the government gave to businesses, right? 
um, toward the end of the semester, you'll be picking out a problem slash project. I would like for it to be somehow an applied problem. I would like for it to use some sort of computation, uh, computational resource if possible, preferably something that you can do through uh, Google Colab so that you don't have to buy anything or any stuff like that, right? But <clears throat> the last uh, two class sessions will actually be work days where I will just try to pop in and answer any questions people might have. Um, and if you don't have questions, then you can you know, work on your own and stuff. But <clears throat> along these lines, you will need to write a proposal. And I think I said here like a 200 to 300 word uh, proposal in a PDF. I will give you a format that I want that in. And I'm going to be a jerk about it and say things like, Double spaced means double spaced because you know, 12 point font means 12 point font. Well, I know those are not a big deal to you, but uh, um, it, in order for things to be easily readable, it's a, getting to be a big deal these days to try to use certain fonts and certain sizes and stuff like that. Okay, so, so I will ask you to do that. Um, <clears throat> Anyway, though, you'll have that to turn in by a canvas. And then when it comes to the final presentation, it needs to be a technology enabled presentation. So you have to use presentation software. I don't care what presentation software you use, but <clears throat> some is easier than others. Okay. Uh, everybody, pretty much everybody knows about PowerPoint and <clears throat> Uh, because the campus has Microsoft 365, you have free access to PowerPoint. Um, <clears throat> then uh, slides is uh, some is the Google version of PowerPoint. Everybody has a Google account. I, I mean, your Guilford account is a Google account, and therefore you have slides. Keynote is a Mac thing. If you're a Mac person, great, have a field day. Okay. Um, and then, sorry, I'm not a Mac person, but I was tricked into being one uh, several years ago. So, uh, if you would like Prezi, great, use Prezi, but I'm going to ask you at the end to export to PDF. And we discovered last semester on the last day of class that Prezi, you have to pay in order to be able to export to a PDF. So, um, if you want to pay for your presentation software, great. Prezi is awesome. It does super great animations and transitions and stuff, but it's it's a monthly subscription. So, so the thing to do is to subscribe for one month and then cut it off. But anyway, though, uh, so so Prezi, yeah. So presentation stuff. Uh, the day before the actual final presentations, I will ask you to turn in the slides. The slides will be graded. Um, uh, I will give you all the, uh, the, the rubrics for this stuff later. But your slides essentially need to be good looking slides. Don't, don't do half ass stuff, all right? Um, but along those directions, I am going to give you some indications of things that are standard, uh, standard criteria for slides nowadays, uh, like in business presentations and stuff, you've got to do certain things certain ways. Don't make it look like something that that a high school student would do. Okay, and if you are a high school student, I don't mean to be insulting. It's just college presentations and high school presentations look different. So, all right, uh, what's the last thing? Oh, you'll do this presentation. I wonder of wonders found out that our final exam period for this class is 5 30 to 8 o'clock p.m you know in the evening <laughs> on april i think it's the 7th it's listed on the on the schedule um ah, sorry in in any case though you'll give the presentation we'll have signups for that uh sufficiently ahead of time um, I will have to think about how much time that you're actually allowed to do this in. Uh, it seems like you probably need to pull it down to either a five or 10 minute presentation, depending on how we set up some things. Okay. Then lastly, I want you to do a write-up 
that is typed, not written, uh, with like a pencil or stylus or anything. And I know that's a super big pain to do with math, but um, I can show you some things that will make it just a little bit easier to type math if you'd like, okay? Uh, in any case, uh, type up a, uh, an executive summary of how you solved the problems, problem or problems. Um, 500 to 1,000 words seems reasonable for this. If you're saying, oh my God, I've never written 500 words in my life, well, get over it. 500 words is like two pages. Sorry, it's, it's not, not that big of a deal. And I am pretty loose about what I count as the number of words. You know, it's just write a sufficient explanation. Okay, it doesn't have to be a certain number of words or anything like that. It just needs to cover the topic and look like you actually gave a darn about it, okay? All right, anyway though, so I'll ask you to upload that and um, those will be, you know, the grades for the semester, so. Uh, as for anything else that's going on, um, yeah. And there is there there are other things that we can talk about in class that are going on. I want to make sure that people have things figured out for technology uh, to hit the ground running that first day if we can. And you know we'll we'll just see what we can do. Okay, <clears throat> should be a good semester. Um, I think we've got everything set up where where we should be doing things that I've kind of wanted to do for a long time. Uh, we should be working together. We should be figuring things out. You should have uh, some resources to ask questions to, and you should be able to actually work with each other. I do want you to get used to not just working with the same person over and over again though, okay? Try to figure out how to work with, you know, your various other colleagues in class because, I gotta be honest, that is a skill I did not pick up very well when I was a student. And there's reasons behind it, but it's, it is something that you really need to be able to do. So I want you to be better than I am. All right, anyway, if you have any questions, um, my email is posted there somewhere on the Canvas site and um, I will see you in class, all right? So take care, see you soon.